wrestling with wrestling's past and present. How old were you? I was negative three. <laughs> See, JR is trying to contain Jim Ross. McFlurry, he, uh... He... <laughs> Is, is it's that... McFoley. You see any of the aggro crag? Was any of that left over? <laughs> no, unfortunately not. No. I'm taking some of that home. <laughs> yeah. Definitely not. Is uh, you know the barn burner that we passed the entire no. time. Same one, <laughs> but you know <laughs> we'll, we'll leave that there. You, you, we digress. God, I hope that storyline ends too. Uh, and six to eight weeks later, they mail you a freaking magnet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you may know him as the Red Rooster. <laughs> it's still real to me, damn it. He kept making out with his wife. <laughs> so then, waiting, I'm waiting for them to put the Selena Vega on a pole match. <laughs> and the mean Biggie's got Whale performing in his entrance, so I feel like Wale. 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 I don't Wale. listen to Okay, well, I don't listen to him, so I apologize to Wale. Um, this is in the mail, my good sir. <laughs> oh, it wasn't. Oh, it wasn't. Oh. I feel like Vince is just going to have the team together and be like, have him called Woo, bro. Like, they're just going to be the Woo bros. Like, I, yeah. I, I, anyway. <laughs> Giving us a reason to come here and listen to ourselves talk. Absolutely. And, we and hope then you can listen to us, too. Oh, <laughs> 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 Strap on and balls only on yeah. wrestling, wrestling past and present. <laughs> this is Gang Grell, the Vampire War, and you're listening to Wrestling where Wrestling's Past and Present. <sighs> this is Wrestling with Wrestling's Past and Present. I'm Tim Kurt. I'm Roland Fulis. And I'm Mongo. And today it is episode, I don't remember the number, but it's uh, Guilty as Charged ECW. I think it's episode 110, right? I'm gonna say it's either 109 or 110. I know, I think we're, it's 110. I know we're right there, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but well, ECW Guilty as Charged 2001, uh, a sneaky, um, significant show. It's the last uh, pay per view that ECW, the original ECW, did uh, before they went under. Tim, when we started this, you know, way back when. Now it's funny to say, did you ever think that like we'd worry about running out of like how many episodes, like how to count, like how many episodes are like, remembering which one was which. Like, I don't, I don't think that was ever even like in the back nope. of our minds. <laughs> I don't think we ever uh, thought we'd get to this many episodes. <laughs> no. And, uh, you know, some of that was based on, you know, you tried it for a little bit and it just didn't work out. And then we just didn't know, uh, you know, if the fans were going to care enough to listen. And from what Mongo has been saying, I mean, we'll cover this now just to get it out of the way, but what Mongo has been saying, we've been growing, uh, especially in India. Yeah, I, I think, too, like you said when we first started TNA last year, that internationally TNA was more well-received than, you know, internationally. So nationally, excuse me, I said internationally twice. But I think that helps. And also, we're not just the WWE podcast. You know, we had someone kind of comment on our socials this week. You should change your name to Wrestling with AEW because that's all you talk about. You only crap on WWE. I'm like, well... We're only giving our criticisms of the you know main roster. We still try to go back. I mean, we're covering ECW 2001 today. We've covered we're covering the Royal Rumble '94 in two weeks. So like we do go around, and we're covering TNA next week, obviously. But the problem is, is just the main product right now is jaded fans, and that's why we talk about it. And unfortunately, if you are a WWE loyalist, you know this might not be what you want to hear. But we're telling the criticisms from our standpoint and i think that's what's helped us grow is because we're not the wb podcast like ronald says we are encompassing dude have anybody been listening to me for the last two months all i've done is shit on AEW and cody and all this fucking shit like what and that's like, what no, is it no, no offense we, but like we I, offer for criticisms yeah like yeah. cody's booking or or the fact know. that AEW has not enough show and too much talent and and yes to a degree they are signing too many former wwe stars but like when there's good talent what do you do let them go like and they and they do let the contracts expire you know marco stunt is you know on his way out there's yeah rumors, i read that article yeah rumors that they're not you know they've let a couple you know big swell we won't get into the twitter drama but you know they let her contract lapse and well that and that not to cut you off but that's the big difference and i want everybody to hear this and the person that commented that thinks we don't crap on whoever and whatever the big major difference is AEW is not releasing these people. They're letting their contracts come up and they're just choosing not to renew them. They're not, they're not Nick Khan. This is Tony Khan. This is someone who is at least honoring their contracts, letting them expire and then wishing them well, not like, Hey, here's a trash bag full of your shit. Would you like to come back and do our Royal Rumble this year? It's really, yeah, right. It's it's really funny that to me before we get started that 
the NFL, they always joke that your contracts aren't worth the paper you, you they're printed on. Shad Khan owns the Jaguars, unfortunately, because, you know, they're bang up record. But even his son, Tony, doesn't do what the NFL does, but Vince does. So it's kind of comical. The person who wanted the XL and to compete with the NFL essentially runs it like the NFL. And the person whose family runs the NFL doesn't treat it like the NFL. So it's kind of comical how it all you know, goes about. And, and that's one of the things I will knock Tony for. He is one of the biggest fanboys of wrestling ever. Like he's like a, a walking encyclopedia and sometimes to his own, like, detriment. yeah, thank you. I couldn't think of the word, but like sometimes, you know, he, but here's the, the, the major difference between the two companies. And, and I know we're not even talking about that, but I just wanted to get that out of the way that that, that one comment really kind of irked me a bit. Um, it, it, the ma- the major difference is that, and Mongo pointed it out, I believe he saw a a meme that like the last sixteen weeks of of AEW versus the last sixteen weeks of Raw, or whatever. When you saw or when Daniel Bryan was on the shows, they or whatever the matches were like it was like thirteen matches or whatever, and Daniel Bryan Bryan Danielson when he was Daniel Bryan for WWE had like 13 matches against four fucking people. And in AEW, he had 13 matches against 13 different people. That's the difference. Like that's the huge difference. So if anybody wants to crap on anything, granted AEW has a lot of talent that it's hard to use, but clearly they're using them because it's not, it's not Brian Danielson. It gets Adam page every week which would still be good to watch to a degree. It might get old after a while, but I'm telling you what, they've had two bangers as it is and fans would see it for a while, but like instead they don't keep going into that. Well, and the only reason they went to that well, because it was set up with a fantastic 60 minute draw. So again, everybody has good thing. I'll give WWE credit right now too. So that person can eat a bag of straw. Um, they do things well as well. Like the, the RK bro thing, like that was thrown together as like a joke and people love it and they've kept it together. The Roman Reigns stuff at the beginning was some of the best TV we've seen in a long time. Both times when, they listen to the fans. Yeah. So, <laughs> so like, Oh, I'm just saying so like, I, I will give them some credit. I will. But like to, to say that we don't, um, you know, that we don't crap on AEW from time to time or, or other companies other than WWE is just, you clearly just don't listen and, and you see a comment that's off the wall crapping on one company and then you go, oh, I'm a fanboy for this company and I'm going to defend them. Well, that's not the case. So I invite you, commenter, whoever you are, to actually listen to the show. And if you do, you'll see that where we do favor, I would say AEW, it's because A, their product is better, they treat their talent better, and it's for good reason. I mean, I'd say we're invested in it more because they, Thank you. they give us what that's, we want. That's a good way to put it. And I know Tim has a good point too. Well, I was just going to say, uh, we full disclosure here, uh, Roland admitted uh, uh, before we went on the air that he's a little bit cranky this morning. So if you comment on him, uh he's gonna he's gonna unleash today probably well, <laughs> Release the I, I, just, I just as soon as mongo said that like that that all we do is like blow smoke up AEW's ass it's like no like i i literally the other day went on like a 15 minute rant about how cody winning the eight the AEW uh tnt championship was the biggest load of shit they've done in the like whole existence of the company like what like, we listen. <laughs> we criticize every company that we cover. I mean, we're going to criticize, uh, I'm sure, some of this show. Uh, but we crit- TNA, which we love covering TNA, but we criticize TNA with the whole three life crew thing and Team Canada. Yeah, every it's show called that opinions. We- that's, <laughs> yeah, that, that's why you guys listen. Yeah, that that's so. the thing. You guys like to hear our thoughts on things, and if it comes off as criticism, sometimes it is. Sometimes it's praise. Sometimes it's compliment. Sometimes it's complaint. Yeah, and, that's how it works. And it's how you phrase it. You know, like Tim said, we're going to be talking about ECW. I mean, we can sit there and complain up the wall, or we can sit there and talk about what we like to. It depends. It, it depends on what we feel. Obviously, we can't go back in time and fix the spate view, so it's not like it's going to be constructive criticism. But that's just <laughs> what it is. That's what a, that's what podcasts in general. I mean, I listen to 
you know, podcast where I feel like the guy does nothing but crap on, you know, AEW and praise WWE, but that's fine. That's his right to do whatever, but I still enjoy his content because he still delivers the good one of the good, the bad one the bad. And that's what we try to do. We're not trying to be anyone else's podcast. We're trying to be wrestling with wrestling's past and present. And, you know, clearly people like it. We thank you for those who do. And mm-hmm. we'll say, let's, we'll get on with the show is because Tim's giving me the look. <laughs> I just figured we we usually do that at the end. I just wanted to kind of appreciate you know the 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 growth we've had. I know we kind of got off a, a little topic there, but I mean, you know, a thank little. you. Oh, <laughs> hey, you know what? Sometimes you have to take like the the bad light bulb on the Christmas tree and replace it before it gets worse. Before they all start going out. So like we just literally saw that bulb go out and went, oh crap, and plugged it in. <laughs> anyhow um let, let's uh i agree with mongo let's uh get going into the show here yeah so it's guilty as charge uh 2001 um if you the show if you watch the show it's about two hours and five minutes and i think the intro is about two hours and four minutes <laughs> uh, did anybody catch that like the intro just never ended like it was, it was... Like five it was like six minutes it was so long, and I know it was supposed to be because I looked it up on YouTube because I'm like, this music sounds awful, and it should, you know, but obviously ECW's right. It was supposed to be a Rage Against the Machine song, and then the network just clearly dubbed it. So I think that's what made it worse. And then you had the impromptu little kind of match, not a match, and then another video package. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so we they had off- they had the, the TNA formatting <laughs> before yeah. TNA was a thing. <laughs> so. We start off the show with Joey Styles and Joe Gertner in the Whoa. ring, and Joe Gertner cuts a very uh, family-friendly promo at the, uh, <laughs> at the beginning. I, of the show. I, I will say that some of these promos, not to cut you off, but like the ones he's done, and then some of the ones that Bubba Ray Dudley's done. Good God! Like, can I you know. imagine like what would happen if they tried doing it today? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can't do it. I mean, I mean, he singled out a female fa- fan in the crowd <laughs> and just oh. like. Yeah, yeah you, you can't. Uh, so if you have kids, uh, you might not want to let them watch that uh, that promo. No, no this... offense. If you have kids like under the age of like I don't know, fifteen, sixteen, they shouldn't be watching any of ECW. <laughs> like, and that, and that's my opinion. I'm a parent. Some of that shit they don't need to see. I mean, there was some stuff I didn't need to see. I was like, like I, so my. Like... My parents, yeah, my parents, the same way they did. They didn't want me watching it, and and I know, yeah. I know, Tim's parents, you know, they didn't want him watching it either. Like some, some of that stuff is friggin' gnarly. Like for uh, you know, a kid, a younger kid, it's cool to go back and watch it now because a, it has that cult following and stuff like that, and, and I enjoy it. But like, I imagine, you know, I mean, this was two thousand one. It was twenty one years ago. You yeah, know, so we, like, were, we, were, we were like, you know, junior, uh, sophomores, excuse me, you and I. Yeah. So and, Tim was in middle and school. Tim, and Tim <laughs> was behind that. So, like, it's just like, and it, it's it's just a testament to, and I'm not going to say better because clearly, like, the Attitude Era and stuff like that, the product was better only because it was edgier and new. But it's it's a, it's a testament to the fact that we're able to change and evolve. And again, I'm not saying PG era with WWE. It's just, I'm glad they didn't keep going the other way. Like every match had to be a friggin' barbed wire exploding death match. And then like, you had to keep raising the stakes. till someone actually died in the ring. Like I'm glad that they like went there and then go there every now and again when they have to. And they've balanced it out well, because those ECW guys, some of the stuff they did, There'd be a lot of dead people if they kept wrestling that style of wrestling for 21 years. Mm-hmm. I mean, even think about, you know, like I posted the day, you know, Mike Awesome, you know, taking his own yeah. life yeah. Uh, because of things. You know, look at some of the balls Mahoney dying young and New Jack Canyon. dying relatively young. And you, Canyon, you know, I, I know, I know Canyon. it's not necessarily ECW related per se, but like, I mean, guys like, I mean, Canyon was so talented and, and he just doesn't get Chris any. Canyon, any. You know, yeah, I mean, some of these guys just don't get any of the recognition because, A, they died young, and, and they weren't, like, a big name. They weren't the ultimate warrior. They weren't Randy Savage. They, they didn't have this big name, but, like, they still gave a lot for people, and, I mean, and sometimes for even less because they were working for companies that ran smaller buildings because that's all they could run. You know, and ECW always kind of got 
crapped on because like the bingo halls and blah blah like you just said because that's all they can run but it was hard to get this product on a tv deal because you know like we just said you know we're all middle school high school you know at the you know tail end of ecw so we were all in elementary and middle school when it started so a lot of the wrestling audience was watching you know wcw and wbf because at the time it really wasn't as edgy it wasn't really the attitude there the attitude there was more during our, our teenage years so that's why we bonded with it however you know you had your 20 somethings like Roland said that had the cult following that made ecw but the lack of the tv deal and then the pay-per-view for a relatively unknown company that only had a cult following that kind of led to it so but they were like well, edgier tv mature for sure like you would tune the pay-per-view i can see why my mom would never let me order these pay-per-views i can see why i went to you know the whittemore center to see their watered down version because they weren't allowed to do like a death match in the wit but you know they still put on good wrestling but i was like i don't understand why i can't watch the pay-per-views going back and watching guilty charge I'm like nah, i get it <laughs> you're like oh that's why that's why <laughs> Um, so we start off the show with the Bad Street Boys, which is Christian York <laughs> and uh, Joey Matthews, who's Joey Mercury, which I didn't realize that he was ever in the ECW, so that was kind of a surprise. Um, but they get attacked by the Baldies, and then Cyrus and Jerry Lynn come out, and they have an impromptu match, and you know, it only lasts about two and a half minutes. Uh, Cyrus gets the pin after Jerry Lynn does all the work. Again, it's just kind of a weird way to start the pay-per-view and kind of a little bit of confusion. You didn't know what was going on exactly at all times, which that to me was kind of a theme throughout this whole pay-per-view. It's like a whole lot of confusion going on. So you mean to tell me that even back in 2001, Don Callis was still a fucking worm? No way. <laughs> right? No way. He let, he I let... actually like Don Callis. I know Mongo has different opinions about I, I, him. Okay, so... I didn't like his overexposure. That, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, like, I didn't like that he was on TV every week. But I think he has good character work. I can't I can't I, fault that. I, I will say, as like that slimy heel manager, he is one of the best. I, I will say, even even back when he was in the like Truth Commission in the WWE, way back when, mm. like his like slimy heel, I'm better than you, almost like MJ esque, like. Ugh. Like that, that just like I want to hate this guy. Middle aged GF, I got it. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I'm just saying like he has that kind of like to compare him to. Obviously, he's not MJF. I mean, he's better than MJF. Oh, oh, oh burn. Um, I don't want him to get too orange from that tan of his. Um, anyway, okay. I know. Can we just say real quick? <laughs> it's 2022, and the dude still can't find a better tan than Spray Tan City. You remember, you remember a couple <laughs> weeks ago when he was in that suit and Punk came out and he took his jacket off? Did you see all the orange bleeding through his shirt? I couldn't stop looking at it. I'm like, dude, like seriously, like you're even supposed Don, to. Even Don Cal's in this PFB looked like he hit the tanning booth a little hard. <laughs> oh, he's a little pasty, dude. So, but anyways, yeah, no, I, I, I will give him credit is it, for that he, he was that style of like you know chicken shit kind of heel manager slash sometimes wrestler slash commentator kind of what he is now except you know 20 years younger <laughs> so right and then after the match i don't understand lynn's promo like basically saying it's your job to build the stars that was my job for blah 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 fucking years and i'm not a jobber no more basically like okay, calm down. No one thought you were a jobber in ECW, Jerry Lynn. Like, I'm so confused right now. Like, why are you yelling at poor Joey Mercury just laying there in pain? <laughs> You're not a jobber anymore because you guys are going out of business. You don't yeah. have a job. <laughs> but they didn't really know. See, and that's the most fucked yeah, up thing. Yeah, that's the worst Like, part. Paul Heyman was very sneaky about the end of ECW. And um, there's a really good podcast called Extreme Conversations with Brian Myers. It's only like six episodes um but it's really good because he basically sits down he talks to everyone in ecw because obviously he's a wrestler so he has different access so he just literally interviews like stevie richards chris candido's brother and all these people and they talk about you know this and they kind of go towards the end where you know paul was saying yeah we got this deal coming in and we got this coming in so they're all like after this pay-per-view like yeah we're, we got the next one but basically two more house shows after this pay-per-view ran and they were done and paul he was commentating at wrestlemania <laughs> like it's it's just it's kind of sad because he saw the writing on the wall and he didn't let the wrestlers know, but he says later in interviews that's because he didn't want to have them deliver a sloppy product. But it's like, if you know, you at least got to not lie to them. Like, yeah, we're good for another year. Like, that's kind of messed up, Paul. But it is well, what it is, you know. <laughs> and 
if yeah. uh, if I wasn't so nasally this morning, I, I would have done my impression. But I, I wish I wish Tim had had it queued up. We kind of we we didn't have the ability to chit chat about that ahead of time, and I didn't even think about it. But like the, the whole check is in the mail uh, would have been a good <laughs> a good segue there. But no, uh, we are we've gone through the, the history of Paul Heyman and what kind of business person he was, and for better and worse like yeah he was kind of protecting the guys too like telling them not letting them know how bad it really was but like mongo said you you kind of especially the guys have been there for so long you kind of have to let them know ahead of time like hey this this this, uh titanic's filling up with water and we're going down like it may not be tomorrow but we're not (laughs) we're not getting out of this son of a bitch so you know either start looking or i'll try to do what i can to find you something i mean and they they had to know as soon as that wwe stuff happened that there was something going on i I guarantee you that the superstars of ecw that once paul started kind of crossing over had that unless they were just too ignorant to even think they're not going to do it for nothing you know, I always wonder, like, nowadays, I it would have survived, you know, with YouTube and streaming platforms, we probably could have gotten ECW sur- to survive. I mean, yeah, granted, the content would be drastically different, but, I mean, nowadays, it's easy. like you have IWTV, which is a an app you can stream, like, some of these smaller local indies and things like that. So, I bet they could have survived if they had some sort of platform, but they didn't have a TV deal, and it was either TV deal or you pretty much tore bingo halls back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so our next match is a tag team match for the ECW World Tag Team Championship. You have um, Danny Doring and Roadkill getting a win over Hot Commodity, which is Julio De Niro and Easy Money with uh, Chris Hamrick and Electra. Uh, by the way, Chris Hamrick's gimmick, I don't think you can get away with today at all. <laughs> uh, watch the show if you want to find out what that is. <laughs> Tim, what, what was that gimmick? Yeah, I don't think we need to go into that. <laughs> <laughs> I figured we I wouldn't get you to talk about that, but I yeah, wanted no. to just try once. No. Just for the fans. Um what, what about our, our fans that might be visually impaired, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> uh let's just say um I don't even know where to go with it. Why why are you doing this to me, man? <laughs> hey, I just I, I you're the the guy that runs the ship here, and I just wanted to make sure that there were no loose ends that couldn't right. be not tied up at the end. That's all. If if you can't come up with a way to accurately describe it that doesn't make us seem like bad people, then I'm cool with it. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> it is pretty fucking sketchy. It is. Let's just yeah. say his let's just say his gimmick probably wouldn't rise again. <laughs> ah, uh, yeah, that, that works. We'll, we'll go with that. So it's not the Undertaker. <laughs> more southern <laughs> right <laughs> so it's more mean mark just mean <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay all right See, that's all i wanted i just wanted a couple of weird innuendos and then we we'll move on <laughs> so i mean this match was all right i mean it wasn't a terrible match it might have been a good way to start the show as opposed to that stupid gimmick that we had with cyrus and <laughs> Jerry Lynn. Wait, but... wait, has that intro ended finally? Uh, no, well, they did a the second, second one. They had a second intro after that. <laughs> this oh. was the portrait of the like the that guitar riff one. Remember? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, and like you said, like it seems like there's been a couple of shows that were that way too, where like they like cut in, do like promos or like video packages, and all of a sudden shit's in the ring, and then they, yeah. I don't, well, I don't and, know. like they have ma- like, and I, I might be getting a little ahead, but they have like matches that there's interference that lead into other matches. Like you're gonna have Nova come out here, and then he starts a match with Chris Hamrick, um, and stuff like that. So like you have like matches bleed into other matches. It's really like ECW sometimes they get a little too convoluted. I think. Well, that's what they were known for is their impromptu matches. Like you, you'd be because that's how Paul Heyman would book. It'd be like you, you said you watch a match and then you'd have a run in. You'd be like, oh, it's a run in. Oh, there's a ref. Oh, the bell rang. Oh, they're they're wrestling. Like that was... not to get ahead of ourselves, but they did that with the main event of the show. Yep. <laughs> like they like the main event of the show was an impromptu match. Right, because Jerry Lynn had called out RVD earlier in the show saying yeah. he was doing some shitty B movie, which, to be fair, he really probably was doing some shitty B movie because <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but I think this match would have surprised me of Danny Doring and Roko. First of all, it's cool that to know that they were the last tag team champions in ECW. 
Um, but just, I forgot how athletic Roadkill was. And when he was like springboarding off the top rope, that clothesline he did took both of them out. It's pretty freaking cool. Yeah. And he's a big dude. Yeah. Well, he may not be now. Like Mongo, you know, met him and didn't even recognize Wait, him. He's, he, yeah, he's done. He well, was because he's, yeah, he's slimmed down. He looks good. And, you know, it's, yeah. it's cool because, you know, the podcast, the autograph, we have his action figure prototype, which I think is pretty cool that we have a prototype picture of, you know, what we're talking about right now. Then essentially he is an ECW Hall of Famer. And yeah, his gimmick wouldn't work out, but he was, t- he was talented. And unfortunately, it's just lack of place to go, I think. Well, and, and that's one thing that ECW led to was the stigma of like these guys being quote unquote trash wrestlers. And there's a lot of good talent here. Like, yeah, there are some guys a la, I mean, and the weird part is, is that they ended up getting jobs a la Sandman and Sabu to a degree that were those trash wrestlers that like, yeah, they were popular. But I mean, when's the last time you saw Sandman do like an actual wrestling move mm. besides like a headlock or something? Yeah. Like, and again, or, or I'm not, New Jack. I mean, yeah, you know. I'm not. Yeah, I mean, besides hit someone in the nuts with a stapler or something. When's the last time New Jack? And again, we know he just passed away recently, whatever. But like, that was that that stigma, for whatever reason, was on. Like that stink was on all of these guys when they went out of business, and it was hard for them to find work, and it was hard for them to prove they weren't just trash wrestlers. And again, a lot of them were talented, paid their dues, been in the business for a while. You know, a guy like Jerry Lynn. Jerry Lynn, it's a shame that he never made it to WWE. I mean, it's, I don't. He did for a little bit. but I know, but he, he not never. Not much. He never, yeah. That's yeah. like saying AJ Styles made it before he came at the Rumble uh, yeah. X amount of years ago. It's like, yeah, he was there for 12 minutes or whatever it was. You know what I mean? Like. It's I'm just, just glad TA at least gave some of them a, a better send off than this. Yeah, and it's just it's just a shame that some of these guys didn't at least get a chance to have that one run because Jerry Lynn, you don't appreciate his career even in TNA. Like he had that little run, you just don't appreciate it. And and he was a fantastic talent. And then you even have like that impromptu match we just talked about with Nova and Chris Hamrick. You know, he went to me, but he basically became Simon Dean. It was a funny gimmick, but they never did anything with it to take us. Like, they could have done so much because Nova is talented. You know, I know he probably hates hearing about the Simon Dean and the Simon Method and all that stuff. But it was funny, him going on the Segway, trying to hawk his shitty on-air products. Like, he could have come up with it. Like, he just gets mad and like, oh, I'm going to come and just, you know, kick this guy's ass. And he could have been a decent mid-carder, but they just buried him and made his gimmick more than comedy act. You mean to tell me the Simon system didn't work? No, the Simon system. It was probably about as effective as the uh, brute is a uh, dude from uh, heavyweights, Ben Stiller. His method there, the Percus Percusize you, the Perkins wow. system. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, heavyweight reference on the show. Wow. Yeah, you Tim, never know. You, you never know. I have seen that movie. Yes, actually. yes. yes. Oh, yes. Oh, is that two weeks in a row? We found a movie that Tim. Yes. Seen? Well, and he liked week. it, and he liked it. I don't remember. I, I we was we Christmas vacation. No. I think so. No, I I remember that we actually had a movie though recently that we were like, holy crap, Tim's seen this one. Yeah. <laughs> no, I have seen every white. Nice. <laughs> we're gonna have to like next year just lock Tim in a room for 24 hours and just start putting these movies on one by one. <laughs> and just be like, watch these. We don't even care if like by the end you're sleeping, but at least watch these in, in the background and <laughs> we can say that you've at least seen parts of them. <laughs> that way he gets our references <laughs> oh, maybe I'll quit halfway through and speaking of quitting oh, see what I did there? Yeah, that, was, that wasn't the greatest segue, segue but uh no, that's Simon, Simon Dean's Dean's segue. Segue. Oh! <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> hey, it all comes together eventually, right? <laughs> uh, so <we> have <laughs> I quit match between uh, Tommy Dreamer and C.W. Anderson uh, goes about just over 14 minutes again a pretty good match, actually. I thought this was all right. Um, you know, obviously, Tommy Dreamer, one of the, you know, pillars of ECW um, and C.W. Anderson with the whole Anderson gimmick, which is kind of weird seeing, like, an Anderson in ECW. But I thought this match was pretty entertaining. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised ECW didn't do more I Quit matches. It's kind of a match that kind of suits their style, I think. Um, so I was pretty entertained by this one. Yeah, I think that... Again, Tommy Dreamer is one of those guys, and I know there's a little bit of a stigma right now because of the whole stuff he said on Dark Side of the Ring, so we won't get into that. But um, 
he's another guy that uh for whatever reason made it out of ECW and was given a chance who honestly isn't as talented as some of the other wrestlers were. Now now Tommy's talented, don't get me wrong. And he has a great mind. But if you're going to look me in the eyes and tell me that Tommy Dreamer pound for pound wrestling wise is a better wrestler than Jerry Lynn, you were on the methamphetamines. Um, because (laughs) I'm just saying like, but there's another example of a guy who, you know, he was one of Paul Heyman's guys from the get go. And like I said, I I like dreamer. I I don't know if you guys have seen the, um, the stuff where they do the, the storytelling on the network. They haven't done it in a while, but the, the Tommy, Tommy ball story, the Tommy ball story where they used to try to hit him in the nuts with a tennis ball. Like they would, they they were bored and they would like line up and Tommy would literally let these guys throw tennis balls on the bounce at his junk. And I and bet, that's, I bet that's just, was pissed. And that's just <laughs> who Tommy was. Like he wanted to pop the boys and have a good time and whatever. And again, fantastic wrestling mind and and he was a good wrestler. But you know he he's just a prime example of being the right person at the right time. And he was the heart and soul of ECW. Like, um, you know, when you think of ECW, like the the Mount Rushmore, you know, you have him, you have RVD, arguably Sabu or Sandman. I think you have to pick one because you can't say Sabu or Jerry Lynn. Yeah, because like you need Jerry Lynn or even Taz to a degree. Like one, one of those guys needs to be on there. So like you can't put both Sandman and Sabu on there, unfortunately. I mean... I was gonna say you might have to put Salmon on there just because he I think he's won the most ECW world titles. Right. Uh, so like and, and then you also have the Dudleys. Yeah. Like obviously, I mean I I'm just saying, so like when you think those those are the guys in ECW you think of, and to the undercard guys like a Nova and stuff, it, it's unfortunate you don't think of those guys. You know, I think if Sabu didn't get hurt as much as he did, I think he would have had probably more world world titles in ECW. But unfortunately, you know, like every coach tells every single player in every single sport, the best ability is availability. And unfortunately, with wrestling, if you're not there, and I'm not faulting injuries, obviously, it's these kind of matches alone, and as well as I'm sure the rings weren't up to quality. Like, you know, WB has like probably the best of the best rings with padding and, you know, protection followed by EW. But you got to think of these rings. These probably just, you know, $7,000 worth of materials slapped together, you know. Tommy Dreamer jokes about putting some of these rings together and there'd be a divot in the middle of it and they had to wrestle around the divot so they didn't kill themselves. <laughs> they'd, they'd be like, just flip the board. Yeah. <laughs> well, because they a lot of times they'd leave them up places and, you know, you, you can't leave wood on metal up because wood will shift and bend over time. Like, spoiler, if you have never worked with raw materials, like shit moves and bows and breaks. That's why if you notice after every independent show, they're usually stripping the ring down and every guy has to learn how to, and girl has to learn how to put the ring together you know my my friend heather is in wrestling school right now in manchester and she's learning how to put the ring together that's what that's what they do you learn the business and you know seeing like a pay-per-view like this you get i get more respect tommy dreamer being the guy like to teach people how the turnbuckles work because he if i'm throwing you into this you have to know what it feels like what kind of tightness you want so like you said he has a great mind in the business wrestling ability wise just probably wasn't up you know i think in this match it was his suit suit excuse me he is the innovator of violence it was a good I quit match. And like Tim said, it should have been more of a shtick because it was more of the ECW feel. And besides the really poor audio quality on the microphone, like it sounded like one of those cheap karaoke microphones, it was a good match and kind of a weird ending, but it was a decent match with a lot of brutal spots. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have a three-way dance to determine the number one contenders for the ECW World Tag Team Championships. Don't worry, it's not a beer. <laughs> you have the Unholy Alliance, which is Sajiri and Mikey Whipwreck, with my guy, the Sinister Minister, who is James Mitchell, one of my favorite guys in TNA that we uh, have discussed before. Uh, they're going to get a win over Kid Cash and Super Crazy and the FBI, uh, Little Guido and T- Tony Mamaluk, in about 13 and a half minutes. Now, I'll fully admit this. This is my match where I wasn't paying attention closely as I probably should have been. Uh, this is why I was on my phone, maybe dozing off a little bit. Uh, I had no idea what the hell was going on like throughout this whole match. This, this was like really confusing to follow. Um, ECW is kind of infamous for these three-way dances matches. Um, but you have a lot of talent here, a lot of good talent. Um, 
And a lot of guys that would make it to WWE for you know a run to Jerry had a good run there. Kid Cash was there for a cup of coffee, super crazy. Was part of the Mexicools. Uh, the FBI was there for a while. Um, a lot of talent in this match, but I just you there's a I think there's a better way to utilize the talent than putting them in the three way dance because those all get kind of clustery as we like to say here. Because I'm super and I'm crazy. <laughs> um, he's another one of those guys that I think is a little underappreciated for a little pudgy bastard. That guy could, for, I mean, it, it wasn't like he was one of those like super thin like luchadors. He was a little pudgy, short, uh, you know, luchador. And, and he could do a lot of stuff that, you know, I couldn't even dream about doing, you know. Uh, and I'm not saying I'm athletic. I'm just saying like for a guy, it's like when you see roadkill do stuff, you're like, holy shit, like. Some of the stuff that's super crazy was kind of the same way because he had that, you know, lucha style where he'd fly around and, and do certain things. And like Tim said, I mean, what else is there to say about somebody like Tajiri? Like, I mean, that that guy is still going today, and I think he's 104. Like, I, I think he just outlived Betty White. And I just it wow, seems to bring it down. Well, I'm uh, we'll, we'll you know we'll get there. I'm just saying, but he's 51, I, I, by the way. I think that like he had. And if you look at him though, he's like Arn Anderson. He's never aged. He still looks the same. Like to G, he's in great shape. Actually, he might even be in better shape now. He's like a, a Dustin Rhodes. He's in better shape now than he was 20 years ago. So you know, I'm, su- I'm surprised GCW, because honestly, to me, GCW is the modern day ECW right now. I'm surprised they haven't brought in Tajiri because he's wrestled locally, like you said, against Sky Too Hotty, who just wrestled there. Um, but and in all seriousness, I agree with this match, Tim. It was just a what the hell? It's just it was so clustery, and then you, the most the most over team gets eliminated right away. So then the crowd just dies instantly. Like it, it, was, it was like they shut the lights off. <laughs> went home. And they're like, it was what like. The hell? <laughs> So I think that's what killed the match. It was like, eh, well, fuck this match. That's literally what it felt like. If, you know, they basically all were like Antonio Brown, like, ah, I'm going to head out. Like, <laughs> like they all, it was just, it killed the momentum. And it's just, I don't know. Like you both said, there's a lot of talent. You have Mikey Whipwreck currently a trainer for AEW. You know, you have Tajiri still wrestling. Sinister Minister, we all know he's one of the best managers of the show. We all love him. Tim still needs him to come and work with Aleister Black. Come in the house of Black. Yes. Man. Like that, that's been Tim's prediction since the get go. Make Absolutely. it happen, Tony Khan. Even <laughs> even if, even if he doesn't do that, like if they could get Jeff Hardy to come in and have Matt go crazy, you imagine having him with those guys. Yeah, like oh, yeah. That, that could work too. You know, open that forbidden door the right way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I I said in our group chat, and I'm going to say this on the podcast now. It would be so awesome knowing that Mickey James is going to be in the Rumble. If Tony Khan publicly went out there and said, Hey, we'll offer up Britt Baker for the Rumble if you want her. Because you know Vince McMahon would like not even acknowledge the comp the 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 uh comment from Tony Khan. Which would then Yeah, which would then make Tony Khan look like the biggest winner out of the bunch because Vince would be like, mm, fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it would be hilarious. And uh, instead, we'll see like Stephanie McMahon in the Rumble. It'll be fucking stupid. So <laughs> I just, I don't, um, like Mongo said in the post, like you can bring up NXT people and you can bring people back. And it wouldn't surprise me if somebody like Maurice and Beth Phoenix do like double duty. Like it, w- it would not surprise me because, like Mongo said, they have 18 women. And I don't think Bailey's going to make it back in time, unfortunately. I mean, he shouldn't, he shouldn't rush her from her knee injury. Either. No, I was going to say if it, if she does, it's going to be a small miracle, and she'll be limited, guaranteed. She'll she'll have to be braced up, and it'll be one of those things where it'll be to to pop the crowd, and like it'll be a like a you know a cheap elimination by whoever she's going to feud with when she comes back, whether it's Sasha, who whoever. But like, other than that, you have a couple of girls that you could probably call up and, and ladies. Um, I don't want to call them girls, but a couple of ladies you can call up from NXT that would deserve it. But other than that, the other NXT girls, ladies, I keep calling them girls. Um, I apologize to any female fans. The, the ladies in, in NXT, like, they're just not ready. And here's my hot take, too. Neither is Braun Breaker. Like, I like the guy. I'm, it's a cool story and everything. But to rush the title onto him 
just to pretty much make Tommaso Ciampa go away because he was part of Triple H's NXT is stupid. I'm just saying it now and getting it out of the way. No more tangent. I just wanted to point that out. My little one, quick little blurb. I still think it's funny they'll do everything to acknowledge, speak of knowledge that he's not a Steiner, but have all the meta jokes of him being a Steiner, including his dad celebrating with him in the middle of the fucking ring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> did you did you guys see the clip of Tommaso Ciampa going over and shaking his hand after the match? Yes. That is, that is what it should be about. Today's wrestlers need to be more like that. Need to be more appreciative of. And, and and the product itself too, like that's the difference between Tony Khan and Vince, is that Tony Khan actually will shake a hand and show a person, and even if it's Greg the Hammer Valentine and he's sleeping during the match, <laughs> he'll still show these people because they're due the respect they've they've earned over the over the years. And you know, I, I just that's the big difference. Vince almost makes it like some of these guys don't exist outside of wwe like it's comical when you see a guy go into the hall of fame for the wwe that's never wrestled there it's like, like the rock. it's like they wrestled somewhere else i mean or people who got popular i mean look the rock and roll express got popular outside of wb and they're in the there WWE hall of fame. ricky morton's got a wb logo tattooed on his leg it's like you weren't you weren't even really there it's cool don't get me wrong but i just thought it's funny like on the cruise there was so many people who were like were they even in WB in like like five minutes? <laughs> Up, yeah. Yeah. But I'm not I'm not crapping on him. I'm just saying, like you said, it's just it's comical. And yeah. to let Tim go back to the match being comical, here comes the one of the most cringe segments and cringe. <laughs> yeah, um, I guess it's a tag team match. I don't know. Uh, they according to Wikipedia with the tag team match, you have Simon and Swinger with Dom Marie and the Blue Boy and Jasmine St. Clair whatever the hell that is. Uh, they're going to fight Bos- Balls Mahoney and Chili Willie. Uh, Tim's having a- trouble handling balls right now. <laughs> From Nutley, New Jersey. Uh, anyways, <laughs> and Chili Willie to a no contest. This is a TV segment. I don't know why it's what this garbage is doing on a paper. Wait, video. hold on. How long that, did that uh, no contest go, Tim? 48 40, seconds. I was going to say it was like 40 seconds max, right? Yeah. yeah. I have in my in my – Thing that I called up, I have 53 seconds, but if Wikipedia says 48, we're going with that. It, it was less than a minute, put it that way. Yeah. I just want to point out since this match was absolute trash, and I'd rather talk about Balls Mahoney instead. I think you both need to at least, if you're going to listen to the one episode of that show I told you about the Extreme Conversations, it's the Balls Mahoney episode because I learned more about him and his like backstage antics personality. That dude sounded like he was just fun to be around. Like he sounded like he was just an absolute riot. I guess he used to go around telling people that he killed a shark in Florida while fishing. <laughs> I remember hearing that story from somebody. I can't remember who I heard it from, but yeah. I'm like, that's Wouldn't awesome. surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, that's awesome. Because even if it's fake, it's they, they're like, oh, it's just balls. Like they all just, you know, went with it. And I'm like, I we all have that person in your life that tells you the story like, yeah, okay. And you just kind of go with it because that's just them. That's what he seems like, you know, or the time that someone went to his house and took his Percocet and he was like ch- chasing down the living room trying to tackle him for the Percocet. Sexy thought, but it wasn't actually his. They just thought they went to his sock drawer. <laughs> and they were like, oh, that's just balls. Like He just seems like a fun person. So, yeah, I, I agree with Tim. It was, this was a TV segment. Like, I mean, I feel like I, I could have got up like, ooh, I'm going to go get some Cheetos. To walk. What the hell? I was just getting a snack. <laughs> Mongo hadn't even got his shirt off yet. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, speaking of shirts, got my new one on today. Nice. I'm wearing a throwback uh, Cerebral Assassin. Nice. I got a plain green t-shirt on. <laughs> so lately, I, I will say that, you know, Tim's shirt game has been just slipping. I mean, I know, I know. He, has, I know he has wrestling well, shirts. I do. I actually just got two from Pro Wrestling Tees. I got Andre the Giant one nice. and uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan shirt. So Very nice. Well, wh- I got I to gotta whip those out sometime. Yeah. Excuse me while I whip these out. (laughs) And we're talking about balls. (laughs) Do you know that reference, Roland? (laughs) I do. Excuse me. Okay. Blazing Saddles, Tim. Never seen that. Damn it. I should I should have should have sell out the heavyweights. (laughs) I will say that's a um oh who the hell's the guy? He's the guy that did space balls, right? Yes, Mel Brooks, and then Sydney Mel Brooks. Poitier. That's why I couldn't think of his name. And Sidney Poitier, rest in peace. He just passed away too. But yeah, yeah classic yeah. movie. Oh. And, sa- and same, honestly, with Betty White. Like I know I threw her name out there. Um, 
like like we had talked about in our group chat as well uh you can thank whoever decided it was a good idea to promote her 100th birthday uh for jinxing the hell out of her because that's all you did it's it's like tim tim can attest it's like when you're bowling a perfect game and someone's like hey you ever shot 300 yeah you yeah. dip shit not anymore <laughs> i was hey, in a, this, like, this guy- Hey, this guy's throwing a this guy. This recently called a no no. This yeah. this guy's throwing a no hitter. He's throwing like, a perfect game. <laughs> Boom, home run that lands somewhere in the next state. It's like, oh fuck. Yeah, I've always I've always personally believed whatever you start celebrating like a hundredth birthday, or like the or they or if they call someone the oldest person in the world, I feel like that's the front of the line fast pass to the gods waiting room right there. Oh. Like if they're like, oh, Steve is the oldest person yeah. in the world. Like two days later, no offense, it's like rest in peace, Steve. You're like. I feel like you like he was you're, forgotten about, and Grim was like, "Shit, I forgot about Steve." <laughs> you're bringing it. You're bringing attention to him. He slipped through the cracks, and he's like, "Oh shit, I forgot that guy." <laughs> meanwhile, this poor bastard just like take me. <laughs> he's like, "Come on." <laughs> so before we get into the next match, um, I want to talk about this really awkward promo with Just Incredible and Missy Hyatt. <laughs> oh, do we have to? <laughs> like. Again, another type of segment you couldn't get away with today. And I don't who was the other girl? Oh, Maybe. don't don't forget about the weird rhino promo too in the middle there. After yeah. the after the uh the the Balls Mahoney the that match they had that uh angry pre-tape rhino weird yeah. segment too. Don't forget about that. <laughs> wasn't it France wasn't it Francine and Missy Hyatt? Was it Francine? Yeah, Maybe. Justin Just Incredible was with Francine. Um yeah. And, it was anyway. it was definitely a very cringy. They didn't even need innuendo. They just straight up told you what they wanted to do. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so we have a match. This was supposed to be the main event uh, for the ECW World Title. It's a tables, ladders, chairs, and canes match. Uh, Sam is going to get a win over Steve Carino and uh, Just Incredible. Excuse me. In just over thirteen minutes. It's a typical ECW hardcore match. Um, you know, Sam goes over, climbs the ladder. Um, I think there's a they messed up one of the ladders pretty badly in the match. <laughs> um, and Justin Carvel goes to use it and stuff. But uh, you know, it was an okay match. It was entertaining. Again, wrestling wise, probably not. You know, for wrestling purists, probably not the match you want to see. But for ECW fans, I think it probably delivered on what it was supposed to. The problem with that was that ECW had such a low budget. These ladders came out of Paul Heyman's parents' basement. So, like, <laughs> once they were ruined, they, had, they were like, oh, no, what do we do? Yeah. Like, they just didn't know what to do. Um, but, yeah, this was typical, a, a typical uh, ECW-style match. They just decided to name it. Um, and for some reason, um, obviously, they couldn't just say tables, ladders, and chairs. Because I don't know. I oh, mean, crap. Well, I mean, at, at this time, I don't know if WWE had it trademarked or not. I would have mentioned, I would have, they probably did, but I mean, or they I, were, Well, did they, they do a table player in Cheers match at this point? This is early 01. Yeah. I don't know. They, oh, yeah, they, they, did. They, they did it. They did it before that. Yeah. They did do it. Okay. Yeah. So, like, I would imagine if they hadn't had it yet, they were in the process of getting it. So, yeah. you know. Obviously. This was definitely the yeah tables, ladders, and chairs, and canes. Oh crap! I remember they had like the awkward promo about it. <laughs> so like, I you know obviously they had to make it different for, but I mean they've never. This is proof that they're going more towards what WWE is doing though, because they're naming a match. Like you don't need to name a match. Just say that you know it's a, a for the heavyweight title and the and the belt will be hanging there, and you got to get it like that. That that was the allure of ECW is that you didn't know it was going to happen. Like in in these style matches, you're telling people what they're going to see. Like then, fans in ECW didn't want to see that; they wanted to see the 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 holy shit and chant and stuff like that because that's what it was about. And someone can correct me on socials because I can't remember the exact name of the match, but wasn't there like a stairway to hell match or a stairway to heaven match? Um, that Bubba was supposed to do at like some arena and they found out it was like barbed wire and violent and they're like, yeah, no. And they literally blocked wrestling from that arena. Like even WWE can't go to this particular arena and bully Riley has jokes about it. Like, Oh, I shouldn't guess, you know, put the name of the match out there and they still would name their matches. So kind of a ballsy move when you go to a smaller, you know, venues or smaller arenas, like you said, to name your match, to tell people what they're going to expect. So, you know, they have to go by these athletic commissions who I'm sure they're like, Oh, tables, ladder, shirt, canes. 
kind of canes? Are we talking like walking canes, Singapore canes, candy canes? Like <laughs> Len Jacobs? Are we talking him? I don't know. Um, Jacob, good night. <laughs> right. I, uh, I I looked it up. It was uh, SummerSlam 2000 was the first TLC match. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I know no. it was definitely fringe. So yeah, six seven months. Like I said, so Vince may not have had the trademark on paper yet, but he probably had filed for it. So. It's probably one of those things Paul Heyman was like, yeah, we don't got money, so if we get sued, like... <laughs> well, if we get sued, we'll just borrow the money from Vince. <laughs> but no, Vince is suing us, Paul. Uh-oh. Um, hey, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and to allude to what Earl was talking about earlier, the awkward promo with Rhino, it was basically <laughs> him, him just saying that... Uh, how can I phrase this so it's appropriate for the show? That... He hasn't. He's gonna be more violent than get himself more pumped up than someone's skills with another talent that's a female. <laughs> like it was, yeah. He basically said that you know she got him going and he'll get more going than she did. I was like, oh, no, that's that's nice, Rhino. <laughs> Real nice. <laughs> I thought you were talking about an air pump for a minute. <laughs> that's the job. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so after the match, Rhino comes out, challenges the Sandman. Sandman scene says, ring the effing bell. And uh, we have an impromptu match for the world title. Rhino hits a couple pile drivers. Goes through the, uh, Sandman goes through the table. Uh, Rhino becomes your new champion in less than a minute. Um, and he tripped while trying to fucking gore him. <laughs> like, yeah, he did. <laughs> my, mind you, this is now sub-main event. Like, yeah, the one. main event just happened. Yeah, one. And sub main event two is Rhino <laughs> issues an open challenge. RVD comes out, but then Jerry Lynn attacks him, and we have an impromptu match between RVD and Jerry Lynn. Uh, this match, though, was really good. Uh, it was a good way to end, you know, I guess ECW really. Um, goes 24 minutes. I mean, these two are really talented wrestlers. Um, they put on a great match. Um, I, I wish it kind of had a cleaner finish. Joel Gertner gets involved, holds the chair for RVD. It's the van. Was it the van Terminator? Is that the name of the move? Like it's basically Shane McMahon's coast to coast. Um, yeah, it's like Van Terminator, I believe. Van Terminator, yeah. Um, but I thought this was a really good way to end the show, uh, even though it's a little clunky in how it got there uh, because it wasn't an advertised match and it led in, and you know, the main event bled into another segment, which bled into this segment. It's so a little clunky. I got there and a little shenanigans at the end, but overall, that was you know, if you're going to go out, what better way to go out than with RVD and Jerry Lynn? All right, um, hot take for a minute, too. I preferred the RVD theme from TNA over any of his themes, over one of a kind, over anything. And I don't know if, like, either one of you... Yeah, seriously, I don't know why. I just thought it was fucking cool. Um, again, hot take. Uh, tweet me at WWPAPMongo. Uh, <laughs> tell, me, tell me that I'm wrong. Um, but, Mongo, do you know the song I'm talking about, honestly? No. Look, look it up. Look it up real quick. Seriously, t- tell me. Uh, try to try to play it on here just for a second. And I, obviously, I don't want to get like a copyright thing, but try try to play like a couple seconds of it and tell me that it's not a friggin' absolute banger. For some reason, it just fits RVD like the way that it was. I love one of a kind too. Don't get me wrong, but his TNA theme. I don't know what made me think of that today. His TNA theme was a friggin' banger. Yeah. Mongo's, see if you can get it. Mongo's, uh, Tim, Tim, you you don't you don't know it either, right? No, no, I don't remember it. All right. uh, I don't remember his run in TNA that well at all, to be honest with you. Yeah, so it was like his like first run, not not when he went back with his uh his now. Yeah, this one, dude. When he came out, that place would go nuts, and he'd be like, people would go friggin' just nuts. And I don't know why, for some reason, and it, and the reason I thought of the song now was because it was like Fan Terminator, Fan Dominator. I, mean, I will say actual... yeah, that, is a, that is a good song, but I I, I think one of a kind just because of the meaning behind it. To me, I like it. But yeah, that's right. that's a great tune. The <laughs> the actual song, like the the unrated version, is it actually says the whole fucking show. Like it, it's like the coolest. Like I, I remember like hearing that, and I'm like, dude, that's fucking cool. Because like I said, he'd come out and he'd be like, Rob Van, and the fans would go like ape shit with him, and they'd be doing it too, and they'd be like, the whole effing show doing the whole thumb thing, and it's like, 
this fuck cool. Like I just I for some reason as soon as Tim mentioned the van terminator, van dominator, van masturbator, whatever the hell they called it. Um Van Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I still I still like that one too. But yeah, I he's had some good songs. I I will say. I don't but, know between both. Yeah, they're both pretty good. <laughs> like I said, you, yeah. you have to experience the other one, like in an entrance. And I'm sure, you know, we, we keep going with TNA. When when does RVD show up in TNA? I wonder. I'll look that up. Have, you, yeah, guys, so you guys, keep going. Wait, speaking I'll of RVD, that. that gives my rating for this pay per view. I'm going to say it's not five star. It's just a five. I think if I were to give this pay per view, because really, I mean, it was clustery in my opinion i think that the i quit match and the rvd jerry lynn match probably the matches i would say were the most enjoyable for me um and i just think the rest was just like tim said this they edited out like the entrances so like they'd just be standing in the ring and they'd just be fighting and it was just kind of and i know a lot of it's because like what we just the ESW just didn't give a fuck when using music so they probably had to edit out the entrances because almost everyone was using like sandman was using metallica and you know pantera was being used so I'm sure WWE, when they put it on the network originally now in Peacock, doesn't want to pay those royalties. So, no. <laughs> you imagine being the poor guy that has to edit that out? Yeah, yeah. like we can't, we can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have the money for this. We ha- we have to get rid of that. And especially nowadays, where I mean, literally, I, we've uploaded things to YouTube with their free music in their library, and it's like copyright strike. This music belongs to, and then I dispute like. It's been approved because it belongs to us because they just have like little bots or whatever listening for certain key elements and the tones and the phrases. And it's crazy. Like, and thankfully, you know, Tim has our back when we do ours and we have our like our awesome wrestling roulette, wrestling roulette last week. You know, that was music he found that worked out yep. great. <laughs> yeah. So we're not totally Paul Heyman. <laughs> <laughs> so it was March 8th, 2010. So we're a couple years away from RVD coming in, but. Like That'll be around episode 350 or so. We'll get to... Yeah, well... <laughs> that damn Loch Ness monster. God, God <laughs> will we get there. And then yeah. when we when we get to experience it all together, Mongo's going to be like, you know what? It's at least it's at least like 1 and 1A. One he may not... Oh, I'm not saying... It's, oh, it's absolutely a banger. It's just... Yeah, it, it's kind of like, you know, I get shit on because the song Simple Man. I personally think Shinedown's version of Simple Man was better than the original and people get pissed at me for that but i'm like they're like different songs like one is more of a rock one's more of a southern country so like i can't i'm not saying their song's bad i'm just saying that like that like one of a kind's great this was more of you know a harder song but they're both great so i can't say like one's better than the other so it's hard for me to always to do that because i personally like one better as me i'm saying one sucks <laughs> So if I had to uh, give this rating, I'm actually probably going to go a little bit lower than you, Mom. I'm going to probably go four and a half just because of, it. yeah, it was a lot of confusion and so much segment, like made for TV segments on the show and just stuff bleeding into other stuff. I just, I don't know. It's, it's kind of confusing. The saving grace for me, though, was the main event. If I had to recommend one match, it was the RVD Jerry Lynn match. Wait, that I thought the main event was for the EC Dip. Um... Well, that was the advertised main event. <laughs> I know. I'm just kidding. Um, I can't believe you guys are going to make me do this. But in honor of Rob Van Dam, I'm going to rate it 420. <laughs> ah. All right, Dave wait- Melser. I was waiting for one of you guys to do I it. I did the five star frog splash with five for yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah four, 420 for Rob Van. 420, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> the. Um, you know, giving Vince the rolling papers. Uh, I don't know if you guys did. You guys see that when they did the uh, the RBD like, special the thing? <laughs> yeah, or even, or even when he gave them to Matt Riddle at WrestleMania, how, like we popped in the group text. We're like, yes, yeah. the Stoners got together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, thanks to RBD, the show was a four twenty. <laughs> I, I liked it. That. that was pretty good. Um, so yeah, that's our rundown. ECW guilty as charge. Uh, 2001 uh the last ever pay-per-view from the original ecw so uh yeah so thank you for listening uh next week we're go we're circling back to tna this time we're covering the year 2006 so we start off with final resolution 06 so uh looking forward to that and looking forward to um 
who's in the four Christian life, Cage and Sting. Screws. Yeah. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, got Christian, they got Christian Cage and Sting and Jeff Jarrett and Monty fucking Brown. Yep. <laughs> What's oh, up? By the man. way, what's, my, what's Monty Brown's finishing move, uh, Rowan? The pounce. <laughs> Practice squad, motherfucker. Hey, 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 hey. Let's, be, let's be nice to Monty Brown. Let, let's, right, that'll, let's be my year, let's... That'll, that'll be my final resolution, but that'll be my resolution oh. to be nicer to Monty Brown. <laughs> well, no, I was going to say, you can do it next week. Let's just not hate on him every week that like we don't talk about him, because then it'll no, get old. Just be, you know what I mean? Just yeah. I know. I'm just, I'm just giving Like his crap. career, he'll get old. Yeah, I know. I get well, old. and so um, let, me, let me run down the card just real quick. Um, so you guys remember, well, not you guys, but the, the fans will remember. Um, you have this the the match that has been leading for a while with Joe and Daniels on this. You also like like Mongo said, Christian Cage Sting uh, against Jarrett and Monty Brown. You have Abyss and Rhino. I know they've been linked together for a while, but I, I assume that'll be a very physical match. Uh, you also then have the new, you know, James Gang together for the first time since the three live crew thing they're going against the diamonds in the rough so you know aj aj styles faces uh tanahashi yeah Yeah. uh sean waltman makes his return uh, against raven so you know and the the beginning the match of the night i i'm hoping and again it's going to be probably a cluster because that's tna how they start things listen to the names on the first first match that's not on the pre-show. Alex Shelley, Austin Aries, Roderick Strong versus Saban, Matt Bentley, and Sanjay Dutt. So this should be another fantastic card from TNA. And I'm um, looking forward to covering 06 like we did 05. I know. I'm looking forward to covering 06 because, you know, spoiler alert, we have Kurt Angle debuting this year. And this is really when TNA kind of hit their stride. This is kind of when they became the team. I, this is when I really, really, really became active. I remember I actually saw this pay-per-view. So I'm excited to go back. Cause obviously it's been 16 years <laughs> you know, since mm-hmm. I've watched it. Cause I didn't buy the DVDs except for the best of, but um, you know, it's not like now where, you know, the impact plus app, like Roland says was such a good deal and you get to watch all these old ones again. So I'm excited to go back and revisit it because obviously now we know what Tanahashi is now, like going back and like, Back then, yeah, he was from New Japan. He was known, but wasn't. Now he's a megastar in New Japan. So, essentially, we get to go back and watch his early beginnings against AJ Styles. Everything. So, I'm excited for that match. I think that's a sleeper on the card. Yeah, a lot of good names on the card. Should be a really good show to watch. So, that's coming for you guys uh, next week. Uh, thanks for listening. As always, follow us on our our socials. Uh, comment at us whether we uh, whether you got a bad comment or a good comment. If you got a bad comment, just prepare for our wrath on the show <laughs> well and, and it's not that i don't want people to think that we don't want bad comments no. just when the comments don't make any sense and clearly it's a one-off comment where you haven't listened to the show just maybe listen to the show first then make a comment you know yeah. what i mean like it's just we want comments compliments complaints we want everything but you really need to be uh, at least listening to the show to have a, a proper complaint because you don't have any idea what we're talking about. Yeah. No, you know, feedback is always, you know, welcome. But like Roland said, you know, sometimes we all jump the gun and, you know, think one thing. But, yeah, we might be listening to the show. Or even go back and scroll because I've posted memes. I posted the sparkler meme for the AEW exploding, air quotes here, ring. Like, it's okay to criticize and like AEW. It's okay to criticize WB. Try to like them. It's just harder right now. It's okay to criti- criticize Ring of Honor for folding but liking them. So, that's what I think makes this show special for me is we all have different opinions. We all try to bring our opinions to the show. We think a lot of like on the same things, you know, Tim doesn't watch a lot of the same movies we do, but we still love the guy, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Charge this guy wow. it was a joke, but no, it's, uh, we all, I mean, it, it was a joke, but it was also true. He just doesn't watch a lot of movies. No, <laughs> but in the long run, like Tim has a lot of valued opinions. And when you, you know, talk to us, we agree a lot. Like today, we agreed a lot with the ECW. He may like a little bit more earlier nineties wrestling. I don't care for as much, but it doesn't mean either one of us wrong. It means we try to bring different perspectives to the show. Yeah. And, and speaking of AEW real quick, uh, ring of honor and stuff. When do you think the Briscoes arrive? To it's gotta be. The show? Like it's when gotta, it's gotta be anytime. And what, and what were they teasing last Wednesday? The lights went out like a hundred times. <laughs> and like I nothing thought, happened. 
I thought they were teasing more stuff for the House of Black, but again, like you said, nothing happened. So it's like, like that's the only good thing. But they definitely don't pay off because they always pay off because they did it at a Rampage recently or a Grand Slam. One of them with MJF in the ring, the lights like randomly went red, and then they didn't even acknowledge it. So when they no sell it, I feel like it's something. It's when when they try to oversell it, you know, it's like, like when they were like, "Oh, it must be a power outage," and it was you know Malachi Black showing up. Right. So, so I feel like it's something. And Revolution's what, like March sixth. So we're about two months from Revolution, roughly. So there could be something setting up for there, and that's why I think we enjoy watching because we're invested because they kind of tease things, they slow burn things, like what WWE used to do, and like what what I think we miss. And I think that's why we probably have seen more harsh on WWEs. We're more like the jilted lovers. Like we grew up, we gave you our like youth and our childhood, and I feel like we're not getting a return on our investment. Right. Oh, and speaking of AEW. Um... Well wishes to Ray Phoenix. Thankfully, yes. um, no serious breaks somehow. Um, that was one of the most gnarliest things I have personally ever seen. I don't. I don't know how he didn't break. Say, um, and it was a freak accident. It was kind of like an over rotation. Um, Luchasaurus is a big dude, and I think he just forgot how light Ray was, and he kind of got him up and kind of flipped him just a little bit, and and Ray felt himself going too far back, and he dumb dumb instinctive like, oh, I need to catch myself, and that that'll be the first thing he would admit to is that it was dumb instincts because it's the same thing when someone takes a Styles Clash and they decide not to try to tuck their head because you know moves like that in your head you're not supposed to tuck your head. Well, that's one that you have to. So like. He just reached out and oh my goodness! I, Tim, did you end up seeing it? I didn't know. I heard about it. I did not actually see the shit that it's, happened. But it, it's the yeah, the way his arm misses the table. It reminded me of Sid Vicious in yeah. WCW. That's why I said in the group chat that yeah, like, he jumped oh, off wow. and laid on his foot. Like mm. it just looked gnarly. And my first the side, time, like, the side view, the the yeah. second view. Oh my goodness! Yeah, it's, oh. and, and, and that's the shame. You know, it's it's the, that's why they call him high risk moves. Not sound mm. cliche, like. Even when they do the, you know, the apron spots, I cringe when someone gets power bombed in the apron, hits the apron. Mm. It, just certain things, you're like, oh, those spots aren't always necessary. But no, I agree with you. Hopefully, he co- gets to come back soon because kind of a sad way to end their title run. I'm wondering if they called an audible. I guess on the check because I don't know. Like, I wonder if it was an audible because like shit, he's hurt and he's going to be out for a while. Like we have to yeah, talk about. I mean, they they might have, uh, you know, based on the fact that like he thought he might have broke his arm because it, it it was as soon as he did it, you saw him too. Like they panned away, but right before they panned away, his arms hanging there and he's pointing at it like help, help, help. Like there's something you know. Trying like, to get, trying jungle to boy looked confused in the ring. I know his mom was yeah. there, so so people can come at well probably come at me and say, oh, it was all play, but. I don't know because he looked really confused. I, maybe it was an earlier spot. Maybe I wasn't. Spot, but it just seems like they either ended it quick or they changed the finish completely. Because yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, Phoenix might have been involved in the finish, so maybe that you know they had to pull an audible and stuff like that, like you said. But I'm just so glad seeing it that uh, you know he isn't seriously hurt. And then you know, speaking of the the, the apron spots, uh, Tim, you must be pretty happy that they're starting to do a little bit more with KO. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think him and Seth together could actually be really good. Like if, I, if they decide to go a, a legitimate tag team with those two guys, I think he could be fucking comedic gold. It could be almost Jericho Owens esque if they keep going the way they're going. I don't know if they're going to. I don't know which way they're going. I don't know if it's no. All... It looks like Seth is going to face Roman at the Rumble. So yeah, I, I was kind of hoping they were going to keep those two together because together, like they were like the odd couple, and, mm. and it was just it was good stuff. So yeah. I mean, really? spo- spoiler alert, I think based on my predictions from last week, I, I, Kevin Owens might be leaning towards my pick for the Rumble winner. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that um, it's cool that they're finally – I know it took big money to finally get Vince to do something with him, but uh, one of the more often overlooked and underappreciated guys, he was – if they needed him, he was there. He was doing commentary, his stupid talk show that you know nobody – it seems like when they don't know what to do with someone, they're like, ah, give them a talk show. Yeah. <laughs> we name it? Uh, we'll name this one the KO show. Yeah, right. Yeah, sounds good. But, but, happy like, Corbin show. <laughs> yeah. Happy talk. How about happy walk the fuck out of here? Like, Jade, Jade, yeah. skating with Jade on NXT. Like, <laughs> like, I'm waiting for one of those NXT talk shows. <laughs> Mark Stewart and Snoop Dogg. <laughs> yeah. So I just, um, I just wanted to point a few things out. I know we had a little bit of time. Um, Plus, I wanted to make sure my mom got her full hours worth. So right. <laughs> Sorry, Linda. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> so yeah, so um, thank you for listening again. Follow us on our socials. TNA for you guys uh, next week. Until next week, I'm Tim Kirk. I'm Roland Fulis. And I'm Mongo. And this is Wrestling with Wrestling's Past and Present. Rhino tripped on the gore. <laughs> Monty Brown does the pounce. I hope you're all having a nice day.